Her son was only 17 years old. He had a 29-year-old girlfriend and got her pregnant. When the father found out, he stormed out. Y'all are too young to have a baby. I am. She's actually 29. Dad asked to tell mom about it, and George said he wanted dad to go with him. They called mom into the house, and she thought someone had died when she saw the father and son's gloomy expressions. George said it was the opposite. Mom was very surprised when she learned that her son had a child and that the woman was 29 years old. She didn't know what 29-year-old woman would fall in love with a 17-year-old kid. George said he had lied about his age. Mom said you had to marry her no matter what because your father was the same way at the time. But dad didn't think it was comparable. After all, the girl was 29 years old. Mom told her son to bring his girlfriend home and George didn't know why he was bringing her home. She's having a brain, baby, you dumb son of a bitch. At night, dad woke up from his sleep and realized his wife wasn't around. He got up and walked out of the room to find his wife smoking a dull cigarette alone. Dad walked out and mom hurriedly hid the cigarette. Dad told him to take it easy. She deserved this one. Dad Saturday with her. Mom wanted to be angry with her son, but he felt he didn't deserve it. They had done the same mistake as her son. She didn't know what to do. The father said he could only accept it and just give birth to the baby. But the mother was a religious person and it was the first taboo to get pregnant before marriage. She felt ashamed to go to church anymore. The more she thought about it, the angrier she got. So she found her son and scolded him. When grandma came home, she saw that she was troubled and told her what had happened. So the two of them covered their heads and didn't know what to do. They were very distressed. Just then the sister came out. Good morning. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah you bet. Even though they were upset now, they didn't want to bring bad feelings to their family. The sister found her brother Sheldon and guessed that there must be something wrong with them. That's when dad rushed them to school. Sister took a look at him and dad didn't look very good and they were very worried when they thought that dad was also suffering from heart disease. When George got home, he learned it that his mother had told his grandmother about him. George tried to argue. You have no defense, you're an idiot. Mom told him to hurry up and bring his girlfriend home. George said she didn't want to see them. Mom was very confused so grandma said, when he knocked you up, did you want to meet their parents too? I was not knocked up. I was with child. I need your work On the other hand, the father was driving his car physically and mentally exhausted. The kids were staring at him. I love you. Okay. In case it's not apparent, she was speaking for both of us. Dad worked very hard day and night, which also laid the groundwork for his untimely death. And at this time, Grandma finally found George's girlfriend. Grandma wanted him to come home to talk, but she hated George and said she didn't want to see him, and she was embarrassed. Grandma told her that George's mother had been just like you, and we were just trying to help you. Eventually, she agreed. When the family learned that George's girlfriend was coming to the house, they all dressed very formally and solemnly awaited the arrival of their future daughter-in-law. And dad even put on a new tie for the occasion. The doorbell rang and the family got up to greet the girl, who was so embarrassed that she didn't know what to do. They ate happily at the dinner table, and the mother felt that George had to marry her and be responsible for her. But the father strongly disagreed. He felt they had made a mistake and couldn't make another one. The girl didn't want to get married either. She already had a child and didn't want to have another George. He was just a little kid to her, and the mother was very angry. So marrying me was a mistake. I'm talking about us and talking about them. I think, I think we all know who you're talking about. The original intention was to let the girl go home and talk about how to solve things. But the two parents were arguing. After dinner, the girl was ready to leave when her grandma stopped her and said she could come to her if she had any problems in the future. The girl was so moved that she hugged her grandma. The naughty child thought the refrigerator was too noisy and was going to tear it down. When the sister found out, she immediately called her mother to inform her. And when she came back, the refrigerator was already broken into pieces and dying. The good news is that Sheldon finally found out why the refrigerator was too noisy. But the bad news is that he couldn't put it back. Mom and Dad had no choice but to call a repairman, not realizing that it would cost $200 to put the refrigerator back together. But their refrigerator was only $100 when they bought it. So Dad was furious and he found Sheldon. You know how much it's gonna cost to fix that fridge? $200, I have really good hearing. Do you have any idea how hard I work for the money we get? I'm sorry. I don't care how long it takes. You're gonna pay me back every cent of this. Yes, sir. Shelton was very aggrieved. He just wanted to fix the refrigerator, but he was criticized by his father. When his sister saw Sheldon, she went over and hugged him. Then she asked her mom, who she thought was your favorite child now, that Sheldon had cost the family so much money. 
Mom said whoever takes the trash out and throws it away is my favorite now. She thinks we're stupid. At this point, Sheldon came out and claimed he had found a job that would allow him to pay off his debts. And he decided he wanted to be a newspaper delivery boy. Mom was so distressed when she found out that the little kid wasn't even knee high to her. So she sent her brother to teach Sheldon how to deliver newspapers. What if I don't want to? You're doing it anyway. The next day before dawn, Sheldon woke up his brother, who told him to fold the newspaper and then use a rubber band to pin it up to take it to the delivery. But he thought his brother had folded it asymmetrically. Nobody cares. I care. Then do whatever you want. So in the next few minutes, he used mathematical geometry to create the perfect newspaper folding system which he was very satisfied with. By this time, Mom was also up early in the morning. She was very worried about Sheldon's situation, and Dad reassured Mom that although Sheldon was very smart, but he still had to experience the world. The first day of newspaper delivery started like this, and it took Sheldon a lot of effort to pull the newspaper. Mom drove the car behind her, and then she picked up a newspaper like the newspaper delivery man in the movie. Grandma saw it and came over to care about the situation. Been out here 20 minutes. This is his second house. Everything is difficult at first. For the next week, no matter how bad the weather was, Sheldon kept going. When payday came, the neighbor gave him a tip of 10 cents for being late every day. But Sheldon had worked hard, but that's how life is. People don't care how tired you are. But even so, Sheldon woke up at 5 as usual. His sister, who was in the same room with him, was woken up by his alarm clock every day. She asked Sheldon how long he had to work before he could pay back his father's money. At this rate, 6 months. You suck. Sheldon's temper was getting worse and worse. He was late for school, and when the teacher just said something about him, he started to make a fuss and the teachers were afraid of him. The family was gossiping among themselves at dinner, which also annoyed Sheldon. They were talking about where to go for the weekend. Who cares? You have a problem? Yes, I do. I've had a long day. Is it too much to ask for a dinner with a little peace and quiet? Sheldon, you do not talk to your father like that. Fine, Fine. I'd rather not speak to any of you. He ran to his room angry. Dad saw that he was upset so he came into Sheldon's room. Look, I understand you're tired, but that is no reason. Sheldon tells his dad that he works early and late every day at a job he doesn't like. He was working for money, but it was very little. I keep trying harder and harder and it doesn't even make a difference. So if you're going to yell at me or punish me, let's just get it over with. Listening to Sheldon's whining, Dad didn't punish him. He told Sheldon what he had been through today. He had been scolded by the principal early in the morning and even told to roll his bunk just because one of the kids failed sports. What he didn't expect was for the kid's parents to be more aggressive. Then he stopped a student fight in the locker room and got hit in the elbow. But no one cared about him. Dad just wanted him to know that he was out there taking a lot of heat but not using his family as a punching bag. Dad wanted him to go back to the table and apologized to everyone and finish his meal. Sheldon agreed, and when he grew up, he recalled, My father's wisdom touched me deeply, which is why to this day, no matter what I'm going through, I am never irritating or abusive to any of my friends or loved ones. Home is a safe haven. We can talk to our family about our bad experiences for comfort or solutions. But remember, please don't do it just because it's someone close to you. Just because he is close to you. Over the next few months, Shelton worked hard until his father's debt was paid off. One day there was a new student at school. He was the only girl Shelton was jealous of. Paige, the genius boy skipped a grade and went to college. He was liked by his classmates and thought he was the smartest person in school. I didn't expect to be caught by this little girl on the first day of school. Hello. Hi. Who are you? I'm Paige. You seem awfully young, Paige. Are you with an adult who's taking this class? No. Dr. Sturgis heard about my research on quantum chromodynamics at high temperatures and invited me to audit his course. To save face, Shelton claimed that this doctor was his grandma's boyfriend and that he had discussed nuclear physics with him. I thought Paige would be surprised, but Paige asked back. Do you know how to differentiate under the integral sign? No. Do you know anything? I know you're in my spot. Sheldon Saturday next to him with an unhappy face. And during the conversation, Paige learned that he was the same age as Sheldon and a few months older. I'm the youngest person in this class. Good. I see you two have met. I'm younger than him. Sheldon gradually realized that his status as a prodigy in school might be threatened. On the way home, Sheldon kept beaming as he told his grandma about his day. And she thought Sheldon had taken a liking to Paige. Do you 
want me to kick your seat? I'm still thinking it might be jealousy. Give me one reason why I would be jealous. Grandma said that once you were the smartest student in school, and now here comes one who is smarter than you. In fact, what Grandma said was true, but Sheldon didn't want to admit it. On the other hand, Mom got a phone call. The doctor told him that Paige's parents wanted to come to their house, and that they had a child prodigy like Sheldon, and they wanted to share their educational experiences with each other. Mom was so happy that she excitedly told Dad that all these years, she thought Sheldon was a freak. She was so excited to have a prodigy like Sheldon with her, and he was looking forward to the Paige family's arrival. Sheldon, on the other hand, started off about Paige to his grandma the whole way, and that he didn't like Paige. When we got home, Mom was happy to tell Sheldon, Guess who's coming over tomorrow? Your new friend Paige! Okay, I'm gonna go. Sheldon refuses to be friends with Paige. But his mom thought it would be nice to have a girl his age to play with. And she was worried that Sheldon didn't have any friends. You don't have any friends. Why are you so worried about me? I have friends. Then how come the only person who ever comes over is me, Mom? You're right. I don't have many friends. So I was hoping to get to know Paige's mom. To find a friend for his mom, Sheldon agreed to do it. But the thought of meeting Paige tomorrow made him feel very depressed. That's when he heard the scene on TV that life is better when you suppress your emotions. Sheldon agrees with this saying, as long as you suppress your emotions, everything will pass. What are you doing? Suppressing my emotions. Oh yeah? Suppress this. Early the next morning, Sheldon got himself together and prepared for Paige's arrival. Paige gave him a hug as soon as he came up. Emotions, Mr. Spock, keeps us healthy. He thought that was bullshit because he could barely suppress his emotions. He showed Paige his room, but Paige was interested in his sister's rag doll. That's my sister's, and it's not part of the tour. I share a room with my sister, too. <laughs> Super fun. You're wrong. Next, Sheldon explains everything to Paige, from the desk to the mouse. And Paige is bored. Sheldon introduces her to Professor Proton's autograph photo, but Paige calls him Professor Idiot. Sheldon barely suppresses his emotions and decides to teach Paige a lesson with chess. Sheldon proudly says he invented a new way to play chess, but Paige points out the loopholes in the new game as soon as she hears the rules. During the game, Sheldon talked to her about the parallel universe theory, but Paige thought it was very stupid. Paige also said that Sheldon was funny because other students wouldn't even talk to her about these topics. She asked Sheldon, You ever wish you were just like everyone else? Not at all. <laughs> Me neither. I love being smarter than everyone. Me too. Gradually Sheldon began to feel that he and Paige had a lot in common. And just when he was happy to have made a like-minded friend. Checkmate. You lose. <laughs> Red alert. <laughs> Phaser, stand by to fire on my order. Yes, that makes me the smartest. At this moment, Sheldon finally could not suppress his emotions. He knocked over the board, while the parents on either side were chatting feverishly. Paige's parents said Paige had been smart since she was a little girl and would often help them with their bookkeeping. Mom thinks it's a coincidence that Sheldon also helped with the family's tax returns and got several tax refunds. The father said that every time Sheldon went to the supermarket, he had to put all the labels of the bottles outside. So the staff in charge of the shelves were happy to see Sheldon every time. The parents were supposed to share their experiences with each other, but they didn't expect to be bragging to each other about how great their kids are. Paige's parents said her two children were very well behaved and never gave them any trouble. On the other side of the room, the brother and sister were first to open for business. Chatting with Paige's sister. Why do grown-ups do this? They love to stick random kids together and expect them to just be friends. I oh, know. They were planning a scary event, blowing up the old TV, and Dad and Mom were going to get some beer in the kitchen to go out and continue the chatter. In the evening, Grandma finds her PhD boyfriend, and she tells him that Sheldon has been a little upset lately. What about him? He's having kind of a hard time with the new girl in your family. Understood. The next day in class, Paige continues to raise her hand to answer the questions. And the answers are very accurate. That was correct, Paige. And Sheldon, is that a new bow tie? It is. Looking sharp. Thanks. When he got home, Sheldon found out that his mom was also unhappy. Mom believes in God, but son believes in science. Every time his mother took Sheldon to church, he would get into a fight with the priest. He thought if Jesus could save the universe, then did the octopi who were tens of light years away from Earth, also need Jesus' salvation. The priest said that if these species didn't sow the seeds of sin, then they wouldn't need Jesus' salvation. What if an octopus Adam and Eve brought sin to their world? Would they be saved by a human Jesus or an octopus Jesus? 
But mom is different. She believes in God so much that other believers say a prayer before lunch. But mom even prayed for breakfast. And every night she would pray for her children to be at ease. Sheldon was awakened by her many times. On this day, the daughter of mom's friend died in a car accident. And dad was very sad. Mom, on the other hand, felt that there was no need to be sad. Maybe it was God's plan. She went to the priest and asked him if it was all meant to be. The priest said that although he sometimes had doubts, as a religious he still chose to believe in faith. What do you do? I roll up my sleeves and I work even harder at serving our Lord. Mary, we get out there, help the needy, start a Bible study, hug a stranger and tell them the Lord loves them. Mom's spirit was finally comforted and as she was leaving the priest called out to her. And tell Sheldon, I spoke to my seminary professor and the official ruling is God would appear to the octopus aliens in octopus alien form and save their eight-legged souls. <laughs> Praise Jesus! The following week, Mom went to various prayer meetings to deliver gifts to her friend's daughter. Let him hear you in heaven! Amen! Mom also had to decorate a faith garden for her, which she thought was the place where her friend's daughter would go to heaven. As she talked, Mom burst into tears. She couldn't suppress her grief and was even a little angry. She found her grandmother and wanted her to drink with her in the bar. Mom was drinking alone, and when Grandma asked about the situation, she told her long suppressed heart all she had done was to comfort herself. How could the separation of life and death be God's plan? She reassured her friend that their daughter had gone to a wonderful place. She knew how that could be true, because the best place in the world was to be safe with her family. She was terrified that the next time something happened it might be her own child. She drank a lot that night. Grandma sent her home and told her father again. She told him to be careful because the last time he got so drunk he got pregnant. From the next day on, mom didn't go to church or pray before meals anymore. Everyone thought she had changed. At night, she was alone outside in the yard and Sheldon thought she had given up her faith. Faith means believing in something you can't know for sure is real. She was torn about whether she should continue to believe in God or not, and Sheldon wanted to help Mom get out of this vortex, and they looked at the sky. Did you know that if gravity were slightly more powerful, the universe would collapse into a ball? I did not. Sheldon felt that everything in this world was no accident, that it must be created by someone. Mom couldn't understand why Sheldon had started believing in God too. I don't, but the precision of the universe at least makes it logical to conclude there's a creator. Baby, I appreciate what you're trying to do. And my problem is here. Well, there are five billion people on this planet and you're the perfect mom for me. What are the odds of that? Thank you, Lord, for this little boy. I knew I could fix it. No. <laughs> Maybe faith is obedience, after questioning the futility of the world. For the rest of the day, mom would take Sheldon to church as she always did, and Sheldon would continue to refute the priest's arguments. Naughty kids almost blew up the whole town to create a nuclear power plant. This day Sheldon opened the refrigerator to see what was inside, and what was good to eat. Dad thought that the refrigerator door was open to long and wasted electricity, so he told him to think before opening the refrigerator which made Sheldon feel very unhappy. To solve this problem, Sheldon decided to make a power generation system. He approached his physics teacher to find out if there was a cost-effective way to make electricity. But for every type of power generation proposed by the teacher, Sheldon either disliked the pollution caused or the low efficiency. In order to get rid of him as soon as possible, the teacher said that the only way to generate electricity is nuclear power, which is clean and efficient but requires radioactive elements, which are only available in government departments. He wanted to put Sheldon out of his misery, but he didn't think it would interest him. He was curious to know how nuclear reactors are made, so he called the TV station of the science program and asked them for technical support. Obviously, the TV station didn't take him seriously. They thought it was a kid dialing randomly. He had no choice but to find his doctor friend to find out where he could get radioactive materials. The doctor didn't know what he was doing. I'm trying to build a small nuclear reactor to provide electricity for my house, and possibly the whole neighborhood, if they're nice to me. Fun! The problem is, I don't know where to get the necessary radioactive material. Anyway, it's just a kid, so it doesn't hurt to tell him. Doc said there were trace amounts of radioactive elements in all the smoke sensors, but Sheldon couldn't afford them. The doctor taught him that you can call these companies and tell them 
you're doing a school science assignment, and they'll usually give it to you for free. Sheldon was so happy that the doctor was just trying to get rid of him, but he didn't expect the kid to take it seriously. That day after school Sheldon was very happy because the smoke sensor company gave him a box of smoke sensors with trace amounts of radioactive elements. He took them home and started to disassemble them. Just then, the neighbor came over and wanted to know what Sheldon was doing. Building a nuclear reactor. What are you going to do with it when you're done? Stand in front of the refrigerator as long as I want. Why are you eating cereal for dinner? I was hungry and my parents are in their bedroom. Kid. This poor kid, he had no idea that Sheldon was going to build a nuclear reaction team next to his house. Sheldon called the science team again. And that I've successfully obtained the radioactive material that I'm looking for. Yes, americium 241. I have lots of it. I live at 5501 Grant Avenue, Medford, Texas. The next day the NSA came to the door. Dad realized something was wrong. And at that moment Sheldon was extracting radioactive elements. And that's when... Am I in trouble? Sheldon only scored 95 on his exam which was a bolt from the blue for him because from kindergarten to college his grades have always been flawlessly excellent and this time he was deducted five points how could it bear such a shame he was so convinced that his answer was absolutely correct that he went to the doctor to ask for an explanation no you didn't calculate using maxwell's equation maxwell's equation my sweet patootie on the way home sheldon was complaining to his grandmother was very helpless. She didn't know which side to take. After all, the doctor was her boyfriend. She couldn't choose either side. Sheldon skipped class to prove the doctor wrong, and the teacher found him. I think you might be the first person in history who's ever cut class to do math. The irony wasn't lost on me. I'm here every day, and it's like you don't know me at all. Oh, 95. After his repeated verification, he unplugged the doctor's phone. Dr. Sturgis, this is Sheldon. You're wrong, and I can prove it. All right, little man, bring it on. They brought in grandmas that judge and a heated debate was about to begin. You claim that the only way to calculate the magnetic field in QCD units is using Maxwell's equations. But you're completely discrediting energy density. But you're still off. By a factor of 3.54, which would seem insignificant. The doctor felt that Sheldon was justifying his mistake. He had always treated Sheldon like a child. The doctor was annoyed and said it was the stupidest solution he had ever seen. How could you say that? <laughs> Grandma accuses her boyfriend of how he could have pissed off her little Sheldon. The doctor said this is what happens when their colleagues argue with each other, except he's a bit of a slow runner in his old age. At dinner, Dad asked if the two of them had come up with any results from their discussion. I'd rather not talk about it. Me neither. Brother didn't know what was wrong with them. Answer your question, Georgie. It's when a scientist is too immature to admit when he's wrong. Maybe you're too immature. Gentlemen. Doctor, a grief told Grandma that there are many people with less seniority than himself at school, and no one dares to call him childish. He couldn't stand being called that. He's wrong, and teach him to be right instead of berating him like a big old jackass. That's very hurtful. That's how the doctor got pissed off. At night, Dad found Sheldon. He didn't care who was right or who was wrong. He thought what Sheldon did was wrong. Dad said there are a lot of people in this world who are very stupid, but if they're older than you, you have to respect them and dad tried to tell him not to argue with stupid people. I understand, sir. Thank you for your incredibly wise advice. Okay. Did you just call dad stupid without calling him stupid? Yes. And grandma found the doctor, and she apologized for her outburst. She knew full well that Sheldon had been difficult since he was a child, and told the doctor not to take it personally. The doctor also finally opened up and said he didn't care that the reason he was angry before was because Sheldon was right. He couldn't accept that he had studied all his life and lost to a kid. He felt he was getting old. Don't worry about it. We'll lose a step together. The next day Sheldon continued to skip class and went to the library where he was approached by the teacher who was concerned about whether his problems with the doctor had been solved. Sheldon was very grateful for her concern. The teacher wondered why Sheldon had suddenly become so polite. My father told me I should be kind to old people. How old do you think I am? But I'll say 53. The doctor gave in first, after the mediation of his grandmother. He found Sheldon and then slowly walked up to him and handed Sheldon a 100-point test paper. He said he was wrong. Sheldon knew that the doctor was like himself and that it would be harder to get him to admit his mistake. The doctor told Sheldon the doctor just wanted to give Sheldon a chance to learn. Although academically he was on the same level as Sheldon, 
as his elder hoped that if Sheldon made a mistake in the future, he would be brave enough to admit it like he did. In order to become Einstein, the boy approached his music teacher and said he wanted to learn the violin because Einstein loved the violin as a child, and many of his scientific achievements were researched under the influence of music. Sheldon felt that learning the violin was the first step to becoming an Einstein. In order to fulfill his dream, the teacher agreed to Sheldon's request. That was unpleasant. The teacher had no choice but to give him an introductory video so he could learn on his own. When he got home, Sheldon watched the tutorial and learned it, but he couldn't even play the basic posture. When his sister saw this, she said, I'm speechless. There's nothing in the world he can learn. My brother said it sounded good. I hope it won't pull it next time. Dad came home and was shocked by the strange sounds in the house. Sheldon's learning to play Valiant. He came to Sheldon. Hey, Dad, can you believe I only started playing today? I really can. That day Sheldon found his mother. I figured out why the violin works for Einstein and not for me. I need to become a Jewish person. The parents were bewildered when they heard. At dinner, Sheldon put a coaster over his head and greeted his family in Jewish and even asked to eat only Jewish food. There was nothing the family could do about him. For the next few days, he dressed up as Einstein and try to replicate his extraordinary intelligence. The whole family advised him to go to the garage to practice his violin, but only his grandmother did not care that he was in contact with her in the house because grandma didn't live with them. When the neighbors came to the door one day, dad thought they were there to complain about Sheldon making noise. Instead, the neighbors said that the roosters were very active and the hens were laying eggs like crazy since they had heard Sheldon's violin. He came to thank them and said he was going home to get some eggs for them. On the other hand, the mother found her grandmother, who was over 100 years old, and said that her period was two days late this month, and she suspected she was pregnant. Since listening to Sheldon's piano, she and her husband have had a very good relationship. Grandma said two days late doesn't mean anything. Last time I was two days late, I had the twins. Last time I was two days late, I had menopause. <laughs> Grandma told her not to worry too much, but to take an accurate test, and to her surprise, she was really pregnant. Mom was very worried because the only source of income for the family was only dad. Adding another member would put a greater burden on him and he also suffers from heart disease. Mom was very worried about her husband's health but she decided to tell him the situation anyway. Just as mom told dad about the situation, dad panicked when he learned that his wife was pregnant. He knew that he could not support the child on his meager S-A-L-A or wife or grandma still comes to the house for dinner from time to time. So he asked the principal for a raise. And if he didn't give a raise he would have to rob a bank. Instead, Sheldon called the synagogue and said he wanted to apply for membership. And the church asked him why he was converting his faith. Sheldon said he wanted to be a great scientist because Einstein was Jewish. And by that logic, he had to convert to Judaism. Can I ask how your parents feel about this? Well, when I presented them with my plan, the words over my dead body were used. After hearing Sheldon's words, the church said to Sheldon in a serious voice, To be your own man. But I want to be a great scientist like Albert Einstein. Sheldon, when your days are over, God will never ask you, Why weren't you Einstein? But he might ask you, Why weren't you Sheldon? At this moment Sheldon was lost in thought. In the evening when dad came home, mom was lying in bed in darkness. Dad told mom not to worry, he had applied for a raise and they could raise a fourth baby. I lost the baby. You're probably relieved, huh? I love the first three. Fourth one's a charm, right? Just then, Sheldon knocked on the door. He wasn't going to be Einstein and he wasn't going to change his beliefs. Then he gave the coaster back to mom. Are you crying? Yeah, but don't worry, everything's okay. Good. Sheldon doesn't know yet that because of this farce of his mom, almost got pregnant. Instead, he thought his mom was crying because he had touched her with his change. The next day, dad approached the principal and said he didn't need a raise. And the principal immediately guessed why. I cleared your raise already. Why don't you just keep the money? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. No, no, I mean it. Sure. Until the end, Sheldon returned the violin to the music teacher to win the fiasco. And, but his brother would not give up his dreams so easily. He must become a rock star to help Joe Faye. Well, John, we look good. The little boy was only 10 years old when he began to study the theory of quantum entanglement. He wanted to confirm that the world is a false universe and that all matter is just energy waves. His mother saw him lying in bed talking to himself and was very worried. Sheldon used to dress up as if he had been kidnapped 
and then stay alone in his room to think about physics. Mom was very confused and Sheldon said, I'm trying to block out sensory input. I had a roadblock determining whether virtual particles have a fixed mass or violate momentum conservation. He felt that isolation was the source of inspiration. Although Sheldon was a genius, his mother was afraid that sooner or later he would have mental problems. That day a doctoral friend of Sheldon's was admitted to a mental hospital. He had gone insane while studying quantum entanglement, which made mom even more worried. She went to the library and bought some books on psychological guidance for children. She was afraid that one day Sheldon would be sent to a mental institution too. Every day, she would send Sheldon to school herself to find out what was going on with him. Do you ever see or hear things that other people can't? Oh, all the time. I meant more like things that aren't actually there. Ah, uh, isn't that the fundamental question of modern metaphysics? Mom was afraid that Sheldon had delusions of grandeur. While Sheldon thought all this was normal, he couldn't figure out why his mom was so worried and suspected that she might have anxiety. So he went to the school library to check out a book on psychiatry, and both mother and son were trying to find out what was wrong with each other. While eating Sheldon was counting the dice radishes, his mother became more and more worried, so she said a prayer before the meal. And please keep us all in good health, body and mind. Why are you looking at me? I'm not. Amen. 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 In the evening, Sheldon saw his mom reading a book about mental health. He didn't know what his mom was anxious about, so he went up to her and asked how it was going. But mom thought it was because Sheldon was having mental problems and couldn't sleep. Seeing his mom like this made Sheldon very worried. They both thought the other was having mental problems. I'm just worried about your future. And you talk to an invisible man in the sky who grants wishes. If anyone's mental, it's you. Okay, now you are over the line. You apologize. No! And so they argued. Dad told them to stop arguing and go back to sleep. The next day Sheldon complained to Grandma that Mom might be going into early menopause. Mom got very angry when she heard that and they argued again. Mom took Sheldon to a counseling center. This made Sheldon even more convinced that Mom was mentally ill. And they argued again in front of the psychiatrist, who couldn't intervene. Finally, Mom told Sheldon about the doctor being admitted to the psychiatric hospital. She was worried that Sheldon would be the same as him, which is why she was always anxious. And you think since he and I are both gifted, I'm going to end up like him? It crossed my mind. Sheldon, you're my baby. It is my job to worry about you. I can't help it. I'm sorry I caused you so much concern. In this way, mother and son finally resolved their misunderstanding and embraced together. Although Sheldon's IQ is high, he is often a cause for concern. Unlike his brother, he was business-minded despite his stupidity. He buys a lot of toys at the dollar store. Then he went door to door and sold them to his neighbors for $5 each, making a fortune back home. The genius boy was guaranteed admission to Harvard University at the age of 10, and he could finally leave the stupid high school. His classmates were furious and envious when they heard, and the teachers were overjoyed to learn that Sheldon was going to Harvard because they could finally get rid of Sheldon as a problem. He's been a real pain and the ass for the teachers. The language teacher said that the last time he gave out cards to everyone, Sheldon complained that his one had an extra hole punched in it that was different from his classmates. He even questioned the class teacher's teaching ability. He repeatedly asked the class teacher to give him his place. Although the principal is also quite annoyed with Sheldon, 80% of the school's honor awards are related to Sheldon. If Sheldon left, it would not only affect the school's reputation, the school would lose a lot of sponsorship as a result. This means that the teachers' salaries will be reduced because of Sheldon's departure. It turns out that Sheldon is their boss. The principal wants them to be nice to Sheldon for the rest of the day so they can keep him. That's when the Harvard PhD approached Sheldon's dad. He said that Sheldon had a great talent for physics. It would be very good for his future if he could come to college. But the father said that Sheldon was too young and he was only a high school gym teacher. He was afraid he wouldn't be able to take care of him. But the doctor said that the university had already taken care of his worries. If you agree to let Sheldon go to college, the university will give you a big settlement and put you in a position to be a physical education teacher at the university where the salary is much higher than in high school and he'll be able to take care of Sheldon. No doubt dad was impressed, but mom was adamantly opposed when she learned of the situation. She thought college was too early for Sheldon. It hurt to see what the offer is. There are more important things than money. Everyone in the family 
except mom was very much in favor of Sheldon going to college because they were also annoyed with Sheldon and the principal even tried to keep him on a high salary in order to keep dad from taking him away. It was the first time dad was taken seriously and it was all because he had a genius son. And so the high school and the college worked hard to win over Sheldon's colleagues to please his dad. Dad was enjoying it. The next day dad went to school after Sheldon. He didn't expect the school to have an exclusive parking space for him, which flattered him. In the past, his car could only be parked next to the garbage can in front of the school. And the teacher's attitude toward Sheldon has changed dramatically. They would do what Sheldon wanted. And Sheldon, you'll be happy to know, I made sure they were cut perfectly so that each one has exactly one and a half holes. But mine has half a hole on the top, and Derek's here has half a hole on the bottom. In the playroom, the teachers also deliberately play what Sheldon likes to watch, Star Trek. The principal also gave him a bathroom key that only teachers could use. This meant that Sheldon had priority access to the bathroom from then on and dad came back to the office to find a brand new office in his seat. He loved this feeling so much. When his colleagues saw it, they were only envious. Not only that, the school gave him a gold whistle. In the end, after a fair vote at home, mom won with a veto over the whole family. She still thinks that Sheldon is only 10 years old first not to go to college. Sheldon had no choice but to wait until he was 11 years old to go to college.